Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Robin Lewis. I'm a naturopathic physician practicing here in Vancouver, British Columbia. And today I'm going to be talking to you about a nutrient, one of the key nutrients found in our hair, skin, muscles, and joints. It is the number one protein found in our body. In fact, it makes up 30% of our total protein. It's used to repair fine lines and wrinkles. It's also used to repair the damage that happens in our joints, ligaments, and tendons. Are you ready to know what it is? It's collagen. So now I know that you've probably heard of collagen in the context of reducing wrinkles and for more aesthetic purposes, but I will say that is not what I'm gonna be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about its use for joints and pain. That's my specialty, and so I'm gonna to stick to that in today's topic. There are plenty of other wonderful videos if you wanna look up the aesthetic uses of collagen, but today we're gonna to be going internally and figuring out how it might help you recover from joint pain and injury. I'm gonna start by introducing you to what collagen is in the first place, how it's made, and whether or not you're actually absorbing that supplement or powder that you take. I'm then gonna move on to talk about how it's being used from a structural and pain standpoint, and then end it with a couple little tips to make your collagen supplement go a little further. So let's get into it. So what is collagen? It is the combination of three amino acids. We got glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline. And those three amino acids are assembled into this very characteristic helix formation. For those of you that don't know what an amino acid is, simply put, it's the building blocks for protein. So we have 20 amino acids that will assemble into proteins in our body. So we'll use various combinations of amino acids to form various different structures. Now collagen has this very strong characteristic helix formation that really allows or lends to the strength of collagen. So that's why it is one of the number one things found in all of the parts of our body that are very important structurally. So for example, tendons, how your muscle attaches onto a bone, they have a ton of collagen in them. In fact, 65 to 80% of that tendon is collagen. So this is why collagen supplements are being used a lot to repair damage inside of the body, help improve the health of your joints and things like that. It's worth noting that there are actually 28 different types of collagen. So they'll be arranged slightly different from type one, two, three, all the way on to 28. But if you look into it, they're really only talking about types one, two, and three. And that's because those are the dominant types of collagen found in places like your skin, hair, and joints. So for example, your skin is really dominant in type one and three collagen, whereas your cartilage is really dominant in types two and three. So if you're going to the supplement shop and you're looking at all these different collagens, this is really why one collagen might be more geared towards aesthetics versus the other is more promoting stuff like pain and joint recovery. They're actually including different types of collagen, which theoretically would have an affinity for different parts of your body. All right, so next up, let's talk about how collagen is made. So we're gonna be talking about how collagen is made from a supplement standpoint, but also how it's made inside of the body. So if we're talking about supplements that you buy off the shelf, they're generally gonna come in either a non-hydrolyzed form or a hydrolyzed form. Now the hydrolyzed form is really the newer form of collagen. And its claim to fame is that because it's already partially broken down, so it's broken down by water, hence the hydrolysis, they are going to be easily absorbed forms of collagen. And this brings us to a very interesting point. And in fact, this is a very common myth when it comes to collagen. And that myth is that no matter what collagen you take, it doesn't matter, it's getting completely broken down in the gut and absorbed as single amino acids. So for example, just glycine on its own or just proline on its own. And therefore collagen supplements don't really work because it'd be the same as just having any old protein powder that contains those three types of amino acids. Well, that's not true. In fact, the whole hydrolysis process is designed to help collagen absorb because it doesn't always break down quite that easily. 
And they've even found that the collagen will get in in short peptides. So this is referring to short proteins. So usually two to three amino acids long. So yeah, it is broken down inside of the gut and that is partially the role of our gut is to break down things like proteins, but it's not getting broken down into single amino acids. So it will still enter the bloodstream as something like a proline glycine or a proline hydroxyproline, something like that. And when they study these proteins, they follow it in real time and they will find that these peptides, so these breakdown products of the collagen that you take, will get to the places that they want them to go. So for example, inside of your joint. But just know that there is some difference between a collagen supplement and just a basic old protein. And that's really what we're gonna get into today is what is collagen used for? What is it useful for? Is it all a big hype or is there something legitimate happening here? Now, how do we make it internally? Because certainly the collagen that you're born with as a baby isn't still the same collagen that exists inside of your joints today. So we do have a natural turnover rate of every tissue in our body and collagen, although it is a slow turnover rate versus some other tissues in our body, it still will gradually replace itself. And this is why you can recover from things like a torn ligament in your knee or a tear in your rotator cuff. Like there is a capacity to replace this collagen. And this is also why people who don't consume collagen don't just naturally waste away because collagen is an animal-based product. So there are, of course, limitations to collagen consumption with anyone who is plant-based. But we all know people who are plant-based and it's not like they just disintegrate before our eyes. So obviously we have the capacity to make that collagen inside of us. Those three amino acids, so the proline, hydroxyproline, and glycine, exist in a lot of different sources of protein. So the steak you just ate, the beans you just ate, things like that, they have amino acids in them. They just need to be assembled with the right cues. So you will also notice that there's a lot of plant-based collagen supporting supplements out there. So they don't have actual collagen themselves in them, but they'll have nutrients in there that are really useful for enhancing the formation of collagen inside of your body. So a big one is something like vitamin C. It enhances the production of collagen. So I only mention this not to give you a little lecture on the mechanism of collagen formation, but just to really reiterate that of course there are alternatives to a pure collagen supplement. So now on to how you can use collagen for things like pain and injury recovery. As you can imagine, if the structural parts of our body, like our skin, our bones, our cartilage, our ligaments, our tendons, our muscles, are mostly collagen, then you would think a collagen supplement could take you really far. But as I just said earlier, you do have the means to make collagen inside of your body already. So when is a collagen supplement necessary? When can you rely on just a good healthy amount of protein to do the work for you? Or when is it really necessary to add something like a collagen supplement if you wanna optimize your results? In order to do this, I like to break it into two different categories, chronic conditions and acute conditions. And this is really why I feel like there's a lot of variance in the research when it comes to collagen, because you will notice that certain conditions don't have that impressive of results. In fact, some of them have zero significant effects at all. So why is that? If collagen is so important for these tissues to thrive, why is some of the research not really showing that? Let's start by talking about chronic musculoskeletal conditions. So these are things like osteoarthritis. There are many different types of chronic MSK conditions, but osteoarthritis is definitely one of the most dominant ones. And this is one that has been studied quite a bit in regards to collagen supplementation. So if you look through the literature, it's pretty hit or miss. Some are finding that it helps improve the function and the pain associated with arthritis, and some find that it does nothing. Well, if you understand how osteoarthritis works, 
it does make a little bit of sense why the collagen supplementation in some of these studies doesn't really seem to have a very impactful effect on the body's function or pain. It is a condition that occurs over a long period of time. So this is usually a product of aging. So beating up wear and tear on the joints, especially the cartilage inside of places like your knees. Knees are very notorious to developing arthritis because we're putting a lot of impact and stress on our knees throughout our life. And if that's not matched by nice, healthy nutrition, you're gonna notice that there is degradation that happens inside of those joints. So it slowly wears down and something like arthritis develops. Well, that happens over many, many years. And a lot of these collagen studies are only looking at things from a very short period of time. So you're not gonna notice a very dramatic shift in someone's symptoms if you're giving collagen for a chronic condition and you're looking at it only under a short window of time. Also, collagen is a notoriously slow moving type of protein. Like I said before, it has a much slower turnover rate than some of the other tissues in our body. And in fact, they average it out to about a 250 day turnover rate. So that means that the collagen that you had before will take 250 days ish to turn into brand new collagen. So things turn over quite slowly. And this is why if you really dive into the research, they find that they do get good results if they watch people over at least three months. So leading up to those three months, you might not notice much. Um, the placebo group and the collagen group might look very similar. And it's not till later on that you notice maybe there is a benefit in those people taking collagen. But the reason you didn't see it earlier is because you really didn't give the body enough time to respond to that supplement. So you're never gonna watch a chronic condition like that respond that quickly to collagen. Sure, it'll respond really quickly to a pain medication because that works immediately. But if you're really trying to improve the structural integrity of a joint, that's going to take some time, especially in a more chronic condition. So I think that's why we don't see as good of results with chronic conditions. It's not to say that collagen doesn't still have a use, but you're just gonna have to be on it for a lot longer to really know if it's helping you. And of course, like a lot of things, it's really hard to tell if it's necessary or not. So for chronic conditions like osteoarthritis, I don't see the harm in a collagen supplement, but it might not be necessary and you might be pretty underwhelmed with the results, especially if you do not take it for long enough. So if you're gonna do a collagen supplement for something like a chronic condition, then just stick it out for at least three months because otherwise there's no way it's gonna really do much in your body. You're not gonna notice a night and day difference with this supplement. And so unless you're willing to really commit to taking collagen for a while, I probably wouldn't even bother. All right, so now let's talk about the acute use of collagen. So we're talking about recovery from a recent injury. So you went to the gym and you pulled something or you were playing soccer and you fell and injured yourself. We're talking about something that's happened in the last year or so and you're actively trying to recover from that injury. So you tore something and you're trying to rebuild it. The acute injuries actually behave a lot differently than the chronic injuries because there's a lot more activity happening in the area. So for example, we've all seen someone who just injured themselves. So let's think about sprained ankles, for example. You sprain your ankle, it gets really red, hot, swollen, it's painful, it's tender. This is because there's a lot of inflammation and immune system activity happening in the area your body recognized that something happened and now it's flooding the area to try and repair that damage. So the activity and the turnover rate gets ramped up because now we're not just maintaining the joint, we're actually trying to repair an acute injury. And this is really where I think collagen thrives is because you can notice the effects of the collagen supplementation a lot sooner because everything's happening in a condensed time frame and your demand for collagen is a lot higher at that point in time 
because you're trying to repair something that is torn. And this is really where we start to see collagen performing a bit better in the literature. I'm also using collagen a lot when I do my regenerative injection therapies. So this is things like PRP and prolotherapy. The reason for that is by design, these injections are starting to re-stimulate the healing process. That's what they're aimed at doing. So they're almost mimicking this acute response that you would normally get when you first injured yourself. And now you're giving an injection that's trying to replicate that response. So it too will increase your demand for collagen and hopefully bring more activity to the area so you're getting a higher turnover rate. So I will almost always recommend a collagen supplement for people undergoing that therapy so that we can ensure that you have enough collagen because your demand is higher to repair that ligament or that tendon or whatever we're chasing. So in my experience and in the literature, it seems to be that collagen is really helpful for speeding up the recovery, decreasing the pain and increasing the strength of an area when it is freshly injured. So post injury or post injection. In the literature, they're also finding that the dosage should be anywhere from five to 15 grams a day in order to have these beneficial effects. So of course that is ultimately up to you and your doctor to decide where you're gonna put that dose. And if you wanna go super specific and go for like a type two collagen only or a combination of all of them, really up to you and your doctor. But the literature says around five to 15 grams seems to be the sweet spot. I wanted to end today's short video by giving you a couple tips to make that collagen supplement go a little bit further because as we all know, these things can be quite pricey and you don't wanna to have to take them for the rest of your life. Or if you do, you wanna make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck. So a couple things you can do that always seem to make the collagen work a little bit better, and this is supported by research. The first thing is exercise. And this actually makes a ton of sense if you really understand human physiology. So. The reason exercise is so important to make that collagen supplement give you the best results is because of something called planes of stress. So say you take that collagen and it is creating a new ligament. We want to make sure that new ligament is being laid down in a way that is functional and optimal. So for example, you want the fibers of collagen to be running nice and smooth along planes of stress. How do we know? How does our body know what a plane of stress is? By moving and putting tension on the body. So they'll align along lines of tension. So if we think about you bending your knees, for example, it's a very linear movement. So your collagen is going to form nicely in the plane of movement. If you're not moving those joints, then the collagen doesn't get the cue on how to lay down. Does it lay down this way? Does it lay down that way? that way, all different directions, the collagen really needs to be cued to lay down properly so you're forming a nice structurally sound ligament and not something that is ultimately dysfunctional. Last but not least, we have vitamin C. So vitamin C is really crucial for the formation of collagen. So as I said earlier, the collagen supplement that you're taking is only being absorbed in tiny little chunks. So those tiny little chunks still need to be reassembled when they make their way to that joint into the longer collagen that will ultimately make up that particular tissue. And so this assembly of collagen requires vitamin C. So vitamin C is really crucial when it comes to taking pro collagen, so precursor collagen or early collagen into its mature form of collagen. That is ultimately the strong type of collagen that we want. And so that's why you'll also find a lot of these plant-based supplements are really high in vitamin C, especially when they're promoting collagen. And so if you can't get collagen itself, you can at least help optimize that collagen formation process. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you learned a ton about collagen how it's made, how it can be used in the body, and how you can get the most out of your collagen supplement. I look forward to seeing you guys again next week for some more educational moments.